Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about fish first aid. So we're going to talk about some of the products that, keep, that are really helpful to have around the fish room in case of emergency, illness, or any kind of injury. So we're going to start off with Seachem. Seachem makes great products. Uh, they're very well known for a prime, safe, and their buffers, um, all kinds of things really. But they're a very trusted company and one that we've come to use quite a few of their products. So let's talk about them. So, Prime and Safe, obviously, these are something that's absolutely essential for any fish room as far as I'm concerned. Uh, basically, they act as a water conditioner, but they also detoxify ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, which is super helpful in cases where you're cycling the tank, or you, you are using products or medications that will affect your cycle and cause you to lose your beneficial bacteria. So, very helpful, very good to have around. We also know um, that clean water is one of the best cures for fish. Uh, fish absolutely thrive in clean water, and the cleaner the water is during treatment, the more ideal and more effective they tend to work. Now, some products don't always uh, always follow the directions on the product that you are specifically using. Some of them may require less water changes, but in general, clean water really does aid in the healing process. So you are going to need your water conditioner for that. Now, next, we're going to look at uh, a couple other products they have here. So we have Stress Guard. Stress Guard is really good in cases where, well, stress. It's fairly self-explanatory with that one. It could be from handling the fish. It could be that the fish got in a fight or ended up with an injury. But it aids in the healing process. It helps replenish their slime coat, and it will help uh, heal them up a little bit faster. So especially if you have big, mean, aggressive fish, Stress Guard is very handy to have on hand. So next we have Paragard. Paragard is a really good broad spectrum product. Uh, there's quite a few different uses for it, but uh, basically it helps with parasites and external issues that the fish may have. So if you are having an issue where the fish is affected with an illness related to parasites, it's very effective uh, and it actually works great for things like ick and stuff as well. So next we have Neoplex. Neoplex is basically neomycin. Uh, this drug is used for bacterial infections and fungal infections. Uh, now this is used for external issues that you're going to see. It's not really meant as an internal treatment, but it is a great external treatment. Um, where you're going to see issues with bacterial pitting and things of that nature, it really shines. Now we'll get into bacterial pitting and hole in the head possibly in another video if you guys are interested, but uh, we have been gathering some information on that. So next up we have Canoplex. So Canoplex is canamycin. Now this drug is really good for uh, fish that aren't eating. So if your fish isn't eating and it's not taking food, now this is going to be fairly common with parasites and things of that nature where the fish may actually stop eating. This is like a first treatment to actually get them to eat again. Now once they are eating, it makes it a lot more effective that you would be able to deliver external medications through food. Now a lot of these internal parasites are best treated with an internal actual uh, actually eating the medication. So Canaplex is a very good for a starter when the fish isn't eating or bloated or things of that nature. It's uh, particularly good at bacterial and fungal related infections. So next up is Metroplex, which is metrodizinal. That's a fairly common drug uh, with treating fish. You're going to see it in general cure. So basically general cure is going to be made up of metrodizinal and praziquatinil or prazi. Um, maybe I'm not pronouncing that right, but you get the idea. They're both highly effective medications, very broad spectrum, which means if you're not 100% on diagnosis, a broad spectrum antibiotic is a more effective way to go. Um, a lot of times with fish diseases, they're very similar. Uh, symptoms can be very similar, so it is often hard to come up with 100% diagnosis. So usually your first line of treatment is going to be with products like General Cure. So in this case here, we have the Metro Dizenail. We do have to pick up some Prazi. Uh, that's something on our list that we would like to have handy because they are both effective. Uh, Metro specifically is really good for parasites. Now, internal parasites, you're able to mix it, make a food out of it, and it's highly effective for dealing with internal parasites. Uh, things like Hex, which is going to be one of their causes of hole in the head. So, great medication to have on hand. Uh, and the nice thing about all of these is that they don't actually affect your biological filter. Now, all of these products don't, there are a lot of harsh products out there that will just kill your cycle in your tank. It will kill your biological bacteria. And that's just snatted stress when you're 
fish are already stressed from being sick. So basically now they're sick and they have ammonia and nitrate and stuff in their water that's toxic. So it's very important that you are using products like Prime or Safe in those times or you are using medications that are safe to your biological bacteria. Now it is always important that you're dosing them as recommended. Um, in cases where maybe there's an overdose, you want to make sure they are being dosed properly, which is why we have this very cool spoon here. Uh, I'll let Mike explain this a little bit more because he thinks this is the coolest thing ever, but uh, it's very, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that over time it's a great investment because you want to make sure you're dosing your things properly and there's all kinds of uses for it so I'll kind of let him get into more on the uh, special spoon we have all right guys so I'm actually pretty excited about this spoon I really had to like beg Sierra for this thing because I really don't like using the measuring spoons um, I, I think that a scale is actually a lot more accurate to go by and uh, going to be really helpful um, Sierra has had the most difficult time when we were using these uh, Catamycin Neoplex. Um, the small spoon that comes in these things are, is absolutely ridiculously small. And uh, it's so much easier to use a scale at that point, especially when you need like 22 tiny spoons to put in your tank. Um, it's also going to be a big advantage when Sierra does her um, fish food video where everything's kind of done by weight. So. This here is, uh, it's really going to come in handy. So I'm just going to take it out of the package just so you guys can actually check it out here. So this is the uh, actual spoon itself. Um, I've actually had quite a bit of use out of this thing. Um, very simple. It's got an on button. You can select your mode. It works up to uh, 300 grams, which is uh, quite a bit. Um, I've been using it for my Fos Filtrum. And that's going to help remove diatoms off my background. So uh, being able to measure it out with the spoon is, uh, it's really simple, really easy, and uh, absolutely love it. So I'm going to take it back over to Sierra now, and she's going to continue on with uh, the first aid kit. Okay, so now that we checked out the really cool spoon, let's get into a few more things that are absolutely essential. So one thing you really need is a test kit. Um, not everybody has or invests the money into a proper test kit for their water, but when your fish is sick or anything is going wrong, it is absolutely essential that you know what's going on with your water. Uh, you want to rule that out as a cause or a reason that your fish is not feeling well. Oftentimes, ammonia and nitrite, because they are toxic, could be just causing, could be the causation or the reason that the fish is having the issue in the first place. As we know, stress often leads to illnesses and diseases, so the more stress they have, the more susceptible they are going to be to having problems. So you absolutely need to know, even if you've had your tank established for a long time, when something, it doesn't seem right or the fish isn't acting right, that you want to use that as a as a first measure really to ensure that it's not just caused by the water parameters or something being off with with your water. Now um, another useful product we have here um, this one here is by Fritz um, but it's methylene blue very common product all kinds of different manufacturers make it but it's highly effective with uh, fungus fungal and bacteria primarily fungal issues but it's um, there's all kinds of uses for it. You can use it when you're shipping fish. It kind of sedates them a little bit. Um, that's why you notice if you've ever been to the fish store on shipping day, sometimes you'll notice the water is blue. It is because of the use of methylene blue. It kind of slows their metabolism a little bit. So it is effective when you're shipping fish, uh, moving fish, and just also as a general disinfectant. So there it's very highly effective in baths and things of that nature. Uh, one thing with it, super messy, and it usually, it can stain silicone, so that is one of the drawbacks, but as long as you're using it as, as recommended, uh, and you're using it in a separate tank, you really shouldn't have any issues. Now, the last thing that we like to have around the fish room, it's a little controversial, some of you guys might not like it, but it's going to be aquarium salt. Basically, uh, you can use aquarium salt, they, there are alternatives to it that are a little bit cheaper for instance we have our pickling salt or canning salt now this doesn't have any additives in it it is natural and it is um, it is a, in a pellet form so it's not quite as big as the aquarium salt but very similar now the reason that people would use or the benefits to using salt now we don't use this uh, all the time and it's not an ongoing thing that we use regularly in our tank but we do use it when we're treating our fish. So if the fish has stress or illness, salt is one of the first things we will add to the tank. Now the reason that we do this is because 
It helps reduce the osmotic pressure within your fish. Basically, your fish has to regulate itself. And if it doesn't have enough electrolytes or minerals, basically, it has a harder time to do this. The more minerals and electrolytes there are, the easier time it has. So it reduces some of that stress from it regulating naturally. So it is effective for that. Now it also detoxifies nitrite. So if you are using, again, products that are going to go after your beneficial bacteria or you have a new tank, it will cause the nitrite to at least not be toxic to the fish while it's in the water. So there's a few advantages to it. Um, it's like I said, it's not something we use all the time, but during treatment, it is proven to reduce stress within fish. Now, another salt that we actually use is going to be Epsom salt. So Epsom salt, again, not something we're using on a regular or ongoing basis. Now, this is something I mix with my food, uh, and we do this every three to six months, just basically as a preventative if there's any issues so the fish doesn't get bloated or have any issues basically passing things. So Epsom salt acts as a natural laxative, and it can help in cases where you are treating for parasites and things of that nature. Now, it's not a cure for them, but it does certainly help, and it will help in cases where there is bloating and things like that, just because it helps the fish naturally go to the bathroom better. Okay, now one of the other things that we use along with methylene blue and things like that uh, as like a first, first source of treatment, it's going to be the medicated wonder shell. So this is from AAP. They make this exclusively. Um, I'll include the links if you guys want to check it out. But basically this is uh, similar to our regular wonder shell. So that's basically just a mineral block that slowly dissolves. So it has positive minerals, things like that. But it also has methylene blue and malachite green so it is effective for uh, treating funguses and some bacterial infections um, they also recommend it as like a preventative if your fish does have an injury just to prevent any kind of further secondary infection uh, we have found it to work pretty well in our tanks the, um, the only issue with this product is at times if it's in a small dosage it can cause your silicone to turn blue uh, that's just due to the methylene blue, so to be completely safe, you could either use it on a separate tank or just start with a small dose and see how that goes, but it is worth testing. Okay, so that was our fish first aid kit. Those are basically the products that we like to have around the fish room at all times. Now, like I said, they're great for emergencies, illness, uh, injuries, things of that nature. You always want to be prepared. Now, we are in a fairly rural area, so a lot of these medications aren't easy to come by. You won't find them locally, and at times, with the shipping times, it's uh, sometimes it's too late to wait until after the fish already has the issue, illness, or injury. So they are definitely worthwhile to have on hand. Um, we like having it, too, in case there were people in our area that ever needed it. We're involved with a lot of our local groups and things of that nature, so if anyone needs help or anything like that, we have products on hand to potentially save the life of a fish where if you're waiting to have it shipped and stuff like that, it just might not make it in time. So it is worthwhile, especially if uh, your fish are part of the family like ours are, to have some kind of backup plan or to have some products available just in case something were to happen. Um, again, broad spectrum ones are a great thing to have on hand because they do tend to treat several different diseases and uh, they may not require you to have a 100% diagnosis so the more research and stuff you can do into it always the best uh, ultimately to treat something effectively you really need to know what you have so doing research is going to be key here so tell us what you guys keep in your fish first aid kit leave it in the comments we'd love to know what you guys use and rely on maybe we'll learn a couple new tricks um, definitely share with us and uh, we hope this gave you a better understanding of the things that we use and things we rely on and uh, thank you guys for watching have yourself a great day